in listening. We're glad to come back to you again with the sword. <laughs> we gave you a close shave. Thank you, Brother Logan. <laughs> to give you a very close shave. You know, every man don't use a razor. We that use razors, it can be so sharp. When you're done, you got little specks of blood. You didn't even realize you nicked yourself. Yeah. And then you rinse. And Whatever you use, witch hazel yes, or noxema yes. or alcohol, whatever you use to treat the wound. Well, the same thing we use to shave you. It comes back to treat the wound. The scriptures are versatile. It can make you or break you. And I desire both. I desire to be broken. And I desire to be made. Like in the military, it does both. It makes you and breaks you. Because in order for you to work as a unit, it have to break the way you used to think. And it have to break your laziness, if you have it. It breaks everything about you and then reconstructs a new mind, yeah. which gives you a new form of behavior that you may adapt to the ways of the military. Well, the Bible tells us to endure hardness as a good soldier. Yes, so the scriptures breaks us yeah. first. Before any beautiful building is put up, Whatever is there that's old must be torn down first. That's true. And sometimes there are sentimental attachments to the old building. Uh -huh. Some don't want it torn down. That's the way we are. Yeah. We have sentimental attachments to the devil. That's true. <laughs> there are things about us that we're holding to. Yeah. Not only we don't want them torn down, we don't even want to give them up. That's true. But we know we need to. We know we have to. But we're not ready to. So when the word of God come constantly, repetitiously pounding on us, sometimes we're like, ah, oh, there it is yeah. again. There's that subject again. Uh, and it works on you. And what is God doing? Repetitiously warning you. And the warning is a form of encouragement and enlightenment. Letting you know that God is fully aware what you're dealing with mentally, what you're dealing with emotionally, what you're dealing with physically, and what you're wrestling with spiritually. All of those dynamics of one's being is for God's use. Yes. And all of them must be destroyed yes. so God can build something good and productive for him. Well, as this year coming to a close, I want to remind all of our brothers and sisters, the closing year conference, uh -huh. it's, it's right around the corner. And uh, well, in fact, while I'm mentioning it to all of my financial secretaries in all the temples, I want you to pay attention to this announcement. All the financial secretaries in all the temples, I will be having a meeting with all of you on that Sunday, the close of the conference, Sunday morning, which is January the 1st, at 11 a.m. sharp. Beyond time, we will be in auditorium two, which is the same auditorium that my minister's meeting is held. My minister's meeting will be held at 10 o'clock, and we'll be out before 11 because I won't be able to hold the Sunday session as long as I want because I also have that Saturday session for my ministers as well. So I have to squeeze you in there. To all of my financial secretaries, bring your laptops. 
iPads or whatever you have, bring them. Because I'm one that believe in the church finance should be ran like a Wharton run a prison. Wonderful. You don't play with God's money. There should not be no misusage of a quarter of a penny. Don't even rub the brown off the penny. Leave a penny a penny. Amen. Because the monies that come within the church from around the world, it goes right back out to the people. This is how temples are being built. This is how we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, buy land so those that are less fortunate than us can grow crop to feed the people of their community. We do all of that. Amen. We do all of that. We buy land. So children and mothers and families can grow their produce and eat. And we don't charge them nothing. No, they don't have to pay the church nothing. Well, Pastor Jenna, what do they give to deserve such? Their life to God. They're already poor. The best thing you can give is your life to God. Jesus said, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was naked, didn't clothe me. When I was in prison, you didn't visit. And then the question was asked, well, when did we see you in these predicaments? Jesus made it plain what you do to my least ones. You do unto me. So we have brothers and sisters in different parts of the world that's not as fortunate than Many, whether it's in America or Caribbean yeah. or Canada or Europe, there are many areas of Africa and India. And we don't go out of our way because what we're doing is in the way of God. That's right. The Bible says, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. But then it says, which is your reason for what? Service. Service. Here in America, there are programs that the government have to help the poor. But there are many areas in the world the governments have no program to help nobody. And yet the political figures of these poverty-stricken areas get enough money for themselves. They make you promises until they get in office. They forget about all about you. The preachers are the same way. They are religious politicians. They have a good song and a good dance. Till it come time to give the people what they need. They are afraid to deal with the subjects for the salvation of your soul. So they dance all around the Bible. Fear of offending anybody. And fear of losing money and fear of losing members. Yeah. Wherein your attachment, hear me good, should be solely attached to scriptures. And if it's attached to scriptures, you would only fear one. Yeah. And that one is God. Yeah. And the fear you have for him, if he calls you and sends you, and I say that not loosely, if. If he called you and sent you, just like he planted his word in you, yeah. he had planted his fear in you. And the fear of God will motivate you, drive you yeah. to preach his word without a drop of compromising towards anybody about anything. You know, so it is our duty as God's people to look out for our family. There are many people not trying to scam the church, even though you have some crooks that are just low, they are. But you have people that are really in need. <clears throat> and if you have a bed to lay on, a roof over your head and food in your mouth, be grateful. And remember, you're not in position at all to say anything against the poor. Many of these TV evangelists here in America says, 
that if you are poor, you are not the children of God. That's nothing but a rich pervert who's a hater of the human family. Imagine if you're poor, you're not God's children. Really? Help the poor. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 29 and verse 9. God declared, help the poor. Ignore them. Help the poor. Tease them. Help the poor. Make mockery of them. Help the poor. Look down on them. Help the poor. Shun them. Help the poor. Speak in tongue over them. Help the poor. Shout around them. Help the poor. Act like they don't exist. Help the poor for the commandment's sake. Wait a minute. Help the poor for what reason? For the commandment's sake. When you help the poor, you are in keeping with God's commandment. That's right. You know, when someone commands you to do something, they got authority. If you want peace in your life, you better cooperate. That's right. And Jesus come along and say, the poor you have with you always. So to all of my financial secretaries, please remember that on January the 1st, the closing of our closing year convocation, please remember at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning, there will be a financial secretary meeting. Bring your laptops or your iPhones or your generic phones, whatever you got. You bring them. We'll be in the auditorium, too, at 11 o'clock sharp. Don't be late because I'm on the clock and I'm just squeezing you in there because conventions, I'm extremely busy. Because everybody's trying to meet with us from all around the world. I'm trying to get them in like a revolving door and throw them out. Get them in, get them out. All right, uh, let's go over our baptismal list again. I love to make our enemies upset who's doing nothing and who's watching the truth of God because God through it is doing so much. All right, this is another one-week report, four in headquarters, two in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And let me say this to New Brunswick, uh, listen out for my announcement. I'll be stopping in your area on one Sunday morning for a church business meeting. You know, since our brother, uh, Pastor Taylor, Elder Taylor passed away, yeah. then I, it is necessary that I go there and have a church business meeting so we can kind of, nice. if need be, do some reconstruction, nice. some reformation in... Uh, and see where we are with various officers yeah. and things like that. There's just a lot that we have to do. All right, three in uh, Bronx, New York, four in Pine Brush, New York, three in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, 13 in Richmond, Virginia, three in Charlotte, North Carolina, three in Charleston, South Carolina, 11 in Atlanta, four in Memphis, one in Jackson, Mississippi, nine in Columbus, Ohio, one in Detroit, Michigan, two in Milwaukee, one in Minneapolis, one in Houston, Texas, three in Las Vegas, Nevada, one in Sacramento, International Baptism, three in Cape Town, South Africa, one in the Netherlands, five in uh, Guadalupe, seven in Jamaica, four in the Dominican, three in Trinidad, 92 souls baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, uh, before I dive into the Bible, let me answer this question. Uh, that I sent to me, you stated that if we die, we go to hell. You don't go right away. No, when you die, you go to the grave. Go to the grave. You go to hell when you can't stand up against the judgment of God, the day of judgment. The day of judgment takes place after the first resurrection. When the Lord God of heaven and earth, which is Christ himself, Come for his bride. He's going to present unto himself his glorious church, not having a spot or a wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy. Presenting that church to himself, then the human family that are alive will be caught up together with them that died in Christ. And the mortal bodies, the human body, will be changed from mortal to immortality, from terrestrial, natural, to celestial, spirit that we may be like our Lord. Until the Bible says, he's going to change our vile body. This body right here is vile. vile. Isn't it? Oh, yes. And he said he's going to fashion it like unto his glorious body. So when you die, you don't go to hell, not eternal hell. No. You go to the first hell, That's right. which is the grave. The grave. 
Uh, the eternal hell is a lower hell. I want to certify as I walk with Bible here and answer this question. Yes. I mean, I want to certify as I go. I want to get the lower hell, then I want to get hell as the grave. For when they put Jesus in the sepulcher in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Let's get the Old Testament first, first in the and book then we shift gears and go to the New Testament yeah. so I can straighten my guess out. All right. First in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 22. Follow me. For a fire is kindled in mine anger. Now this is how eternal hell came into existence. They have moved me to jealousy. Oh. Hmm. Eternal hell didn't always exist. Right. Let's go to show you how wicked and evil man is. The conduct of man is the reason for eternal hell. That's right. They provoke the wrong one. That's yes. right. You know, he said, don't have no other God before me, for I, the Lord, thank God, is a jealous God. That's right. You know, there's some men get jealous and go crazy. And there's some women get jealous, they go crazy. They go cut your tires and key your car and, and man, throw your clothes outside and put gasoline on them and have a barn fire. Amen. And there's some men so jealous they stalked you. They squatch down in their car while you're at your job talking to your boss and, you know, and, and just easing around while you're on the phone. The Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. That's right. Well, imagine a jealous God. Jealous. <laughs> His jealousy is intelligent jealousy. Yeah. What do you mean? He don't go off his rocker. No. Mm -hmm. He don't act like a fool. No. But he know he deserve all attention. That's right. Because he know that nobody done for you what he done. That's right. He know that no one been good to you like him. He know that no one gave you anything without him. And he know if he come out of your life, you don't have life. That's right. The ground we walk on is a gift from him. The sun that shines is a gift from him. The breath you breathe is just a gift from him. That's right. So you arrogant, self-righteous folk, including you atheists, I don't believe in no God. I need proof. Just breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. That's right. You that believe a monkey is your relative. Then go visit your nephew at the zoo if that's what you think. <laughs> I had someone write me and said, I admire the fact that you can get Bible to prove everything else. But you cannot get Bible to prove that man did not come from eight. You sure about that? Hmm. Book of Genesis mm -hmm. first. And then I get back to hell. Amen. Genesis. 126 and 127. Genesis 126. Hold it. Then after that, mm -hmm. I want to see how he made everything after its own kind. That's right. Do you get me? That's right. All right, follow me now. Genesis 126 and 127. This is for you Darwin lovers. That's right. Who believe a chimp is your uncle. Mm -hmm. And a silverback gorilla is your granddaddy. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to keep it all in the family. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. I must admit now, you do a lot of monkeying around. I must admit that. Glory to God. But I haven't been to the zoo in many years. Not to the Philadelphia Zoo anyway. But when I walk the streets of Philadelphia. Hey Amen. You go on the job site. Some of your family members. Worse than some animals. Amen. Look at the amount of killing that's being done. I was listening to the news, I think it was yesterday or two days ago. 16-year-old boy. No, it was last night on our way back home. 16-year-old boy called, I believe, a 13-year-old friend of his. He killed somebody. And either FaceTime or reached out to a friend that's younger than 16 to try to help him get rid of the body. My Lord. 16 years old. They are 13, 12, yes. 11, 10. That's true. 
committing the type of crime that not even high-ranking criminals thought of many times at that age. That's right. So it's my job with the Bible to execute God's word to show man his uprightness. That's right. Listen at this now. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Follow me. And God said, let us make man, let in, us our make man in our image. After our likeness. After our likeness. And man was made in God's image and in God's likeness. All right? right. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Yes. And over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. Yes. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So what did God do? So God created man. How? In his own image. Yes. Man was made in God's image. God's image. And God is not the image of a gorilla or an ape. No. Or a chimp. <laughs> no. Not God. Not God. I don't serve a monkey. He ain't a orang he ain't an eternal orangutan. <laughs> no way. That's right. Hear me, God. Now every time man come up with something stupid, people go after it. That's right. Listen, God. So God created man in his own image. And what else? In the image of God created he him. Created he him. Male and female Male created and female he them. Male created he them. All right, now let's get how he made all of the animals. Now and all Genesis the chapter 1. Listen at this. At verse 24 and 25. Yes. And God said. And God said. Let the earth bring forth the living creature. Let the earth produce or bring forth the living creature. After his kind. After his kind. Cattle, cattle, and creeping things, creeping things, and beast of the earth, and beast of the earth after his kind, after his kind, and it was so. Nice. That's plain. Wonderful. So you chimps out there, that's right. Amen. You pulpit chimps, amen. Bishop chim, uh, chimpanzee, that's yeah. right. That's always beating on the offering pan, stealing folk money, that's, that's right. True. You come on back to the Bible now. That's it. Darwin was just a theory. That's right. Darwin's theory. The Lord created man of the earth. Do you hear that? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 17 and verse 1. You know, one. I'm going to take what God said. Oh, yes. No, maybe so about it. I'm going to take so. what God said over anybody and everybody. That's right. The Lord created man in the earth. And turned him into it again. And that's where man will go. So let's go right back into it Again, let's Again. deal with the lowest hell, the eternal hell. And mm. I want to show you how the eternal hell came into existence. Back in Deuteronomy chapter 32, we're at verse 21. Follow me. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Now, the people's conduct was gone after those things mm -hmm. that made God jealous. That's right. And what is it that makes God jealous? It was when you have another God or wish up anything in the manner that you should wish up God. That's right. For only God deserves wish up. Amen. No man, no woman, no boy, no girl, no object is worthy of wish up other than God. That's right. Give chapter and verse again. Deuteronomy chapter 32, we're at verse 21. What is it? They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. And what? They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. They, listen, because the human family was so vain. Yep. Yeah. And the way they thought and what they done. Amen. It provoked God. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. <coughs> yes. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a what people. What they've done to me, I'm going to get back at them. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Then what? For a fire, a fire is, kindled is kindled in mine anger. Is, as a result of my anger, it sparked something. That's right. It ignited a fire. That's right. And For a fire is kindled in mine anger. Yes. And shall burn unto the lowest hell. Wait a minute. Hmm. It's going to burn how? And shall burn unto the lowest hell. That means his anger is going to be eternal. That's right. It's going to burn to the lowest hell. That means his flame of anger won't go out. That's right. Uh -huh. And shall consume the earth with her increase. And set on fire. The foundations of the mountains. That's eternal hell. So when you die, you don't go to the eternal hell. No. You go to the grave, which also is called hell. hell. But notice what he read is called Lowest, lowest hell. Lowest hell. There is no hell lower than eternal That's hell. Right. That's the lowest That's place the lowest. you can go. <laughs> That's right. Can't go nowhere lower than that. No. Now, where you, when you die, right. you go to the grave, which is called simply hell. Now, in the book of Acts, chapter 2. 
Verses 26 and 27. All right, listen at this. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Yes. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. My flesh. My flesh shall rest. Shall rest. In hope. In hope. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell. Thou will not leave my soul in the grave. Neither wilt thou suffer thy well, holy, neither one will you suffer the holy one to see corruption. To see corruption. You know, when your body is in the grave, right. eventually corruption sets in. That's right. And your body deteriorates. That's right. Because it's going back to the dust. That's right. I believe Brother Solomon says In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 7. Yes. Then shall the dust Then shall your body return to the earth. Return to the earth as it was. That's all you are, dust. Dust. So Hallelujah. we need to thank you so much. It just does. That's it. Amen. Just temporary breathing, walking, talking dust. That's right. And this is where we're going. Then shall the dust return to the earth. You see that? As it was. That's your first stop when you die. That's right. When they plant you in the dust, which is the first hell. That's right. Amen. Not the eternal hell. Now, question is, uh, so that must mean that when one that we are conscious uh, that we did reject God or we can feel ourselves burning. Oh, yes. In eternity, you will feel yourself burning. burning. Give me the book of Revelation. Yes. Let's see how long you're going to burn. Amen. Hmm? Let's see how long you're going to burn. Then give me the book of Mark. If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It's better to go than life. Revelation. Man, have two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. That's right. After you get Revelation, let's back up. Back and up. We'll go to Mark. Revelation Follow chapter me 20. Follow your Bible. Revelation chapter 20, we're at verse 10. I want to take this question section by section, piece by piece. Yes. Amen. All right. Revelation chapter 20, we're at verse 10. Yes. And the devil that deceived them. The devil. The, the devil. The, he ain't getting away. The devil that deceived them. The devil that tricked them. Was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Hold it. it. Someone say, well, it didn't say it was cast into hell. The lake of fire and brimstone is eternal hell. Eternal hell. The lake is eternal, and the reason why it's styled as a lake, because it's fire and not water. That's right. And this lake you can't swim in. That's right. You just sink. That's right. And never hit the bottom. Never hit the bottom. There is no light there. No. For one scripture call it outer, outer darkness. Darkness. Out of darkness. Listen at this. And the devil that deceived them. The devil that deceived was them. cast into the lake of fire and cast brimstone. Into the lake of fire and brimstone. Where the beast and the false prophet are. Where the beast and the false prophet. Many of your pastors that are watching, he's gonna be there. That's right. These prosperity heathens, they're gonna be there. That's right. Amen. These fake healers, they're gonna be there. Amen. All right. Where the beast and the false prophet are uh -huh. and shall be tormented. Wait a minute. You're gonna be tormented. Day and night. How long? Forever and ever. That's eternal. Yeah. That's right. So then. That's right. This is what God's going to do to you. Uh, when you stand before the judgment of God, he said, where well, the worm dieth not. Dieth not. This is the worm. Yeah. Yeah. Your flesh That's true. is the worm. That's right. This fire is not like the fire on earth, for the fire on earth in the right setting can be controlled by man and put out right. by man. That's right. This fire is God's anger. That's right. No man can control it. In fact, this fire is the emotions of God. That's right. A fire is kindled in my anger. Wait a minute. A fire is kindled how? In my anger. The fire is God's emotions. That's right. That's something. They never thought of that. That's right. The fire of the earth, that's not God's emotion. No. Because if it's God's emotion, then when man contain it, that means man have overcame or controlled the emotions of his Lord. That's right. Ain't nobody can control right. God's Ain't emotions. That's, right. That's, That's right. why he's giving you a chance now Amen. to escape his emotion That's right. of anger. That's right. That God is giving you, hallelujah, is giving you a chance right now, right now. to get on God's side. Amen. Why? So you don't burn. That's right. Throughout eternity. That's right. So he's going to take your flesh that bears the title worm. worm. 
and you won't burn up, you won't be consumed. No. Because I must admit, hell won't be so bad if you are consumed. Right. But you won't be consumed. No. Look how long your torment lasts. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Yes, you go and feel it. Oh, yes. Because it said with the worm, Dieth not. In the book of St. Mark. Yeah, hear this. St. Mark chapter 9, we're at verse 43. Follow me. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. Hold it. Amen. Come on, guys. When it says if your hand offend you, cut it off, cut it off. that doesn't mean cut off your natural hand. Yeah. No. Let me explain that. That doesn't mean cut off your natural hand. No. That means if there's anything in your life that's close to you as your hand is. Cut <laughs> off from that thing, meaning get away from that thing that is close to you that threatens your walk or even your desire to walk with God. That's right. Cut off from that thing. Back away from it. Amen. Get away from yes. it. Flee from it. Yes. Right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Listen. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. Why? It is better for thee to enter into life made. It is better to enter into life, it is better, better to go back with God without that thing that you are close to. Then having two hands. Than to have that thing or things. To go into hell. To it, go where? Into hell. What? Into the fire. That what? That never shall be quenched. Oh, that fire will never let up. Where now, the, what, 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 what about the bodies that are there? Where their worm dieth not. You will never die. And the fire is not quenched. And the fire is never turned down. For everyone shall be salted with fire. What? Everyone shall be salted with fire. In hell. Hallelujah. Eternal hell. Hallelujah. Everyone shall be salted. Salted. You know what that means? Hallelujah. When you're salted, Hallelujah. you're covered. That's right. You know, you can, you can take salt and pour it on a thing until yeah. you can't even see the thing. That's right. So much salt is on it. That's right. You're going to be covered by the flames of hell. Everyone. Everyone. Every king. Hallelujah. Every prince. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every governor. Yes. Every president. Everyone. Every man and woman, regardless of your race, creed, or color, or your status in life, that have rejected. God, cuss God, belittle God, vow God, turn your back on God. Everyone shall be salted with fire. Everyone. Everyone. Hallelujah. Shall be salted or seasoned. With fire. With fire. And every sacrifice. Every sacrifice. Shall be salted with salt. Shall be salted with salt. Hallelujah. So yes, you're going to feel it, no maybe so about it. Oh yes. Uh, now, so once we die in God being baptized... Are we conscious of us being with him? After all, if we die without him and burn, can we feel it? Oh, yes, a little bit so about that. Uh, should we be able to die with God and know and feel that too? <laughs> Listen, the dead knoweth nothing. Right. So the dead feels nothing. That's right. Until they come back to life, you're no more dead. Right. So when we stand before God, here, this, here, here, give me the 15th chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Uh, you better begin at verse... Uh, 1 Corinthians. Mm, about 38. First, Co 1 Corinthians. 15, 38. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 38. 15, 38. Let's, let's get the body and see what kind of body we got now, what kind of body we're waiting on. You know what, I Pastor? We'll start at verse 36. All right, verse 36. I want to dissect this and... Put it on the table and form a biblical autopsy. Cut the Bible open. That's right. And show you how the thing works, you know. That, that's right. This is a very good question you got here. Amen. But, but, but it has to be answered in detail. That's why I have to take line upon line, precept upon precept, and go here a little and there a little. That's right. All right, come on, son. First Corinthians 15, rather, we'll start at verse 35. All right. But some man will say, how are the dead some raised up? Some man would say, how are the dead raised up? How is the dead coming back? And with what body do they what come? What kind of body would they have? Thou fool. Your fool. That which thou sowest is that not quickened. That which thou plant Amen. is not quickened. It's or that which thine plant is not revived. Or that which thou plant do not have life. Except, Except it die. It die first. And that which thou sowest. And that which you sow. Thou sowest not that body that shall be. Hold it. When you plant the body in the ground, yeah. 
That's not the body that's going to reign with God. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Notice it says, And that which thou sowest, that which you buried, that which you planted, thou sowest not that body that not shall be. the body that shall be. That's not the body that's going to reign with God. No. But that's not the immortal body. That's, right. that's not the celestial body. That's but right. that's what? Thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It's grain. It may chance of wheat. It's a natural body. Or of some other grain. Do you hear that? That's right. So when we plant our dead in the ground, you're planting grain, you're planting yeah. seed, you're yeah. planting a natural body that have no life. That's right. Waiting. There's only, you know, there's only two classes it wait for. That's yeah. true. Either first resurrection, blessed and holy is he to have part in the first resurrection on such to have the second uh, mm -hmm. death have no power. Wow. Uh, but the one that come in the first resurrection, he's blessed, she's blessed, and holy. It is he that have part in the first, first resurrection, resurrection on such a second death have no power. If you come in the second resurrection, then you're going to be in trouble. That's right. Standing before the judgment seat of God. That's right. Real quick. 1 Corinthians 15, now we're at verse 38. Yes. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. Amen. God and giveth it a body which it hath pleased him. And to every seed his own body. Yes. All flesh is not the same flesh. All right. But there is one kind of flesh of men. All right, go down to about verse, at uh, verse 40. 40. There are also celestial bodies. All right, down. Here's, here's the body that is talking about the difference in the body. That's right. There's also what? There are also celestial bodies. A celestial body is a body that's spirit. Right. That's the body that you're waiting on because you're waiting to be changed. That's right. We'll get to that scripture in a few. All right. There are also celestial bodies. Yes. And bodies terrestrial. The body that you have now is a terrestrial body or a natural body or a human body. But the, but the glory of the celestial is one. Yes. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. See, the glory of the celestial is one because that's the eternal body. That's right. But the glory of the terrestrial is another because that's a temporary body. That's the right. The Bible says those things which are seen is temporal, temporal or temporary, but that which is not seen, that's eternal. All down right. At, down at verse 42. All right. So also is the resurrection of the dead. What is it? It is sown in corruption. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. Sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Yes. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. All right. It is sown in natural body. It is sown in spiritual body. All right, I don't have time to get all that. Let's verse go down 50. further so we can see what's going to happen to everybody. First, verse 50. Uh, 15 and verse 50. All right. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But what? Neither do with corruption inherit incorruption. What's the result? Behold, I show you a mystery. What is the mystery, yeah. William? We shall not all sleep. Hold it. Amen. Right. Amen. I want to show you a mystery. The mystery. Everybody won't sleep, which means everybody won't be dead when the Lord comes. That's right. But what's going to happen? But we shall all be changed. Yeah. How quick is it going to be done? In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. The change of your terrestrial body to celestial. The change of your mortal body to immortality. It's going to be as what? In a moment. In a moment. In the twinkling in of an eye. In the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump. At the last trump, mean when God's voice is heard. For the trumpet shall sound. God's voice. That's right. Hallelujah. Shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we hold, shall be. Hold, take your time and read that last part. Amen. And, and, and the we dead. Shall be changed. Be changed. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And what? And we shall be changed. Do you hear that? Amen. So when you're with God, Hallelujah. You no more flesh and blood. You no more natural body. That's right. But you have a glorious body. Who shall change? Again, I believe it's Philippians, if I'm correct. In the book of Philippians, 3, chapter 23. 3, and we're at verse 21. For verse 21. Who shall change our vile change body. going to change our vile body like unto. That it may be fashioned. Fashioned. Like unto his glorious body. Do you hear that? Amen. So, yes, you'll be able to see and hear and walk and do all that, but you won't have the pains that you have now. Right. You won't. Uh, in fact, let me go deeper with it. Come on. When you're with the Lord, you won't even remember this earth here. That's right. You won't even remember that you once was flesh. That's right. None of your pain, none of your bad experiences, yeah. none of your anguish. That's right. Isaiah. All of that is part 
of the eternal reward. That's right. Just being with the Lord is not only part of that reward, but wiping away your former thoughts. That's right. Because think of it. If I'm with the Lord and still remember the negativity that I experienced here, and yet being with the Lord is eternal, then I thought it would be an eternal emotional misery. That's true. Feeling the same pain, That's true. grieve about the same things, grieving about my loved ones in hell, because I still will have this fleshy attachment. So God going to sever all that. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 65. At verse Hallelujah. 16 and 17. Yeah. Amen. God, I said. God. God. He going to sever all that. Isaiah chapter 65. Verses 16 and 17. Listen at this. That he who blesseth himself in the earth yes. shall bless himself in the God of truth. Yes. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. Yes. Because the former troubles are forgotten. Uh-oh. Amen. Former troubles. Are forgotten. Are forgotten. And because they are hid from mine eyes. They are hid from mine eyes. From my eyes. For behold, I create new heavens. Behold. I create new heavens, new heavens, heavens. The heaven that you see, the sky, the moon, all that stuff, all that stuff is going away from here. That's right. He's starting everything off fresh. That's, That's right. right. Huh? For behold, I create new heavens. I give you new heavens, hallelujah. And a new earth. And a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered. The former. Hallelujah. This is what you got right now. That's right. The farmer shall not be remembered. Listen how good it is. It won't even be remembered. No. Come into mind. It won't even come to your mind. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Isn't that wonderful? That's wonderful. That's right. That's wonderful. Well, remember no. when you was raped. Yeah. Well, remember. That's right. When you was taken advantage of. That's right. Won't well, remember. Won't well, remember. When you was beat up by your husband. That's right. Won't well, remember yeah. when you was used and abused Hallelujah. by false prophets. That's right. That's right. Won't well, remember what your daddy done to you, what your mother done to you, Amen. what that man done to you. That's right. Yeah. Won't well, remember when you was living out in the street with no job. Amen. Amen. No suffering will come to mind. And the former shall not be remembered. You see the intelligence and the wisdom of God? He know I just can't give my people a new body. That's right. But I got to clearly wipe away their past. That's, that's right. If I don't, they will be with me and still miserable. That's right. So that's the right. Bible tells us. That's right. He going to wipe your tears away. That's right. That's what the Bible said. He's going to wipe all your tears. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God. He's going to get rid of them. That's right. We got a lot to cry over right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We got a lot to cry over now. But in that day, glory. Hallelujah. In that day, a new body. Or if they got no form of pain. That's right. Any hurt that you experience. You don't feel it? No. You don't remember it? No. It'd be as if you never was once mortal. That's right. When you change from mortal to immortality, it'd be as if you have been always immortal. Let me give you a better understanding. Do you remember? In the book of Revelation. Hold it. Do you remember uh -huh. when you were immortal? <laughs> you don't, do you? No. Because you wasn't. That's right. Your flesh right now. This is all you know. That's it. So when you change from mortal to immortality, all you're going to know is immortality, and you won't know flesh. That's right. It'll be as if this universe... And your natural human side never exists. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It'd be as if this universe 
never exists. He wiped away this earth. In eternity, there is no moon and there is no sun. That's right. And there shall well, be. Well, well, how do we got light, Pastor Jennings? God. That's right. Is the light. That, that's right. Let's read this. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 5. Revelation 22 and 5. And there shall be no night there. What? And there shall be no night there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There shall be no night there. No night. No night. No night. Amen. No night there. And they need no candle. Wait a minute. You don't need a no. candle. Need the light of the sun. You don't even need the light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and, and ever. And they shall reign throughout eternity. And God shall wipe away all tears from I, their I eyes. I told you. In Revelation 21 and verse 4. God shall, hallelujah, God, God shall up. wipe away. God shall wipe away. All tears How from much? their eyes. All tears. Everything. All tears from their eyes. Take God everything you ever cried about. And there shall be no death. What? There shall be no death. Can't die. Neither sorrow. Wait a minute. Mm. On, Notice. Amen. When he changed your body, Amen. he changed all emotion that's, right. that's connected to your body. That's right. That's right. That's wonderful. He changed your body that's right. from mortal to immortality, yeah. and he disconnect all the emotions from the immortality body that you had when it was mortal. That's right. So all you know, spirit, yeah. New Jerusalem, God, everything. Everything. That's divine. That's right. Your whole existence is an existence that consists of pure peace. peace. That's right. No confusion. No hatred. That's right. Nothing. That's right. Not even Satan will have preeminence. No. He will be powerless That's right. because he will be bound to himself yes. in everlasting chains of darkness. That's right. You know we serve a great God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. No more death. Neither sorrow. No sorrow. Nor crying. No what? No crying. No crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. Mental pain, physical pain, emotional pain. Doesn't matter what category that category that pain come under. That's right. The word of God says. Neither shall there be any more pain. So nobody can hurt you. That's in eternity with God. That's right. Unless God chooses to. That's right. And God is not bringing the church with him to afflict them. No. Spending eternity with God is your reward. That's right. As a result of your obedience and your endurance right here. That's right. Are you listening? Neither shall there be any more pain. There shall be no more pain. For the former things are passed away. All, all the former things, anything that connects here. That's right. It's gone. That's right. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. All right, so I 